During these past couple of lectures, we've talked about so many different kinds of conversion factors. Let's start putting them all together. So for number 23, my first order of business is to complete all of the conversion factors. So one mole of tungsten has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd tungsten atoms. So I'll use Avogadro's number to complete that first one. I can flip that and have Avogadro's number in the numerator. In addition, we have that mass to mole conversion factor. We're going to get the information for that from the periodic table. So one mole of tungsten has 183.8 grams of tungsten, and that one can be flipped as well. I thought I would map this out before I actually jumped into solving it. And one thing that you'll notice with all of these conversion factors, they all have mole in common. And that's going to be clutch here as we start solving more advanced problems. So we got moles of tungsten, moles of tungsten. So moles will be the bridge to wherever you want to go. We always need to go to moles and then we can go to our next destination. So here I'm going to go atoms to moles and moles to mass. Now to get from atoms to moles, you're always going to use Avogadro's number. And to get from moles to mass, you're going to find the information that you need on your periodic table. Let's actually do this problem. In this problem, we're given 2.25 times 10 to the 22nd tungsten atoms. So I'm going to start with that number out front. We want to get rid of tungsten atoms. So as I set up my first conversion factor, I'm going to put tungsten atoms in the denominator and one mole tungsten in the numerator. I know that this relationship is Avogadro's number. So one mole tungsten has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd tungsten atoms. So it looks like this first one that we wrote. I like to cancel a lot, especially as these problems get longer and longer. I kind of get lost in all the details. I want to make sure I'm taking the right steps to get to my destination. So at this point, tungsten atoms are gone because they've canceled. Now I want to get rid of moles of tungsten so I could figure out the mass or grams of tungsten. So I'll set up my next conversion factor to do that with moles of tungsten in the denominator and the molar mass in the numerator. So let's see how we're doing. So moles of tungsten would cancel with moles of tungsten leaving us with just grams of tungsten. So in your calculator, you're going to do 2.25 times 10 to the 22nd. I would divide, I would multiply by the 183.8 first, hit enter or do a set of parentheses, and then divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Make sure you're using that E key. And at the end of the day, you should get 6.87 grams of tungsten. In the previous problem, I set up the conversion factors ahead of time. Typically, chemists will set up their conversion factors on the fly. Let me show you how that looks. So I'm going to start with the information they gave us, 3.78 grams of silver. And even without reading too much of the problem, I know I have to get rid of grams of silver. And I know I'm going to go to moles of silver because moles is the bridge to wherever you want to go. So looking at the periodic table, I can grab the molar mass of silver so 
0.868 and grams of silver will cancel out with grams of silver. So that's completely gone. How many silver atoms? Alrighty. So now that I'm in moles of silver, I know I can get rid of that and turn it into silver atoms using Avogadro's number. So I'm going to write 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd silver atoms in one mole of silver. Let's see what's canceling here. So moles of silver cancel moles of silver, leaving us with just silver atoms. So we did it, it's perfect. Um, throw the numbers into your calculator and you should get 2.11 times 10 to the 22nd silver atoms. Starting with 4.91 times 10 to the 21st platinum atoms, I'm going to set up my first conversion factor to get rid of platinum atoms and go to moles of platinum. So I'm going to need Avogadro's number to accomplish that. Next, I'm going to get rid of moles of platinum and use my periodic table to change that into grams of platinum. So one mole of platinum has 195.08 grams of platinum. Everything's canceling nicely, leaving us with grams of platinum. And the answer is 1.59 grams of platinum. This is such a cool problem. So here we're looking at elemental carbon in the form of a diamond. In an earlier lecture, I had mentioned that the lead in your pencil is not really lead at all. It's elemental carbon and it's commonly known as graphite. So you have two different forms of elemental carbon with vastly different properties. And when this happens, it's known as allotropes. Anyways, that's just for your own information. Let's tackle this problem. So we're asked to convert the 1.3 carats to carbon atoms. And they gave us this piece of information here that one carat equals 0 0.20 grams. So in my head, I was thinking, I can set up two conversion factors with that. I did one carat over 0 0.20 grams, and I added the elemental symbol for carbon. And then of course I got my second one by flipping the first one. So we're gonna start this problem with 1.3 carats, the piece of information they gave us. And right off the bat, I'm like, eh, carrots doesn't really have a place in chemistry. We need to get rid of that. So I'm gonna put carrots in the denominator and, oh good, I can use this and get to grams of carbon. And now carrots is out of the picture, which is great, because again, what are we gonna do with carrots? Um, next, I wanna get rid of grams and I can convert that to moles. So 12.011 grams of carbon in one mole of carbon. 
That's looking good. And then for the last one, since we're asked to solve for atoms, I'm gonna use Avogadro's number. So I'm gonna say one mole of carbon, and that's going in the denominator, has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. And moles of carbon is canceling of moles of carbon, leaving us with just carbon atoms. That's perfect. So multiply all the values on top and then divide by the 12.011. And when I did that, I got 1.3 times 10 to the 22nd carbon atoms. So for numbers 27 and 28, the primary difference is that instead of converting between mass and atoms, we're now converting between mass and number of molecules. To do that, we're going to need to take that extra step and calculate our molar mass before we set up our conversion factors. So I got 98.082 grams per mole as the molar mass of H2SO4, it's commonly known as sulfuric acid. So I'm going to put that value in the denominator on this conversion factor and in the numerator on the other one. They gave us the number of molecules, so we're going to have to use Avogadro's number to help us get rid of the molecules. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sulfuric acid in one mole of sulfuric acid. And of course I could flip that. So to set this up, I'm gonna start with the number that they gave me. And this is gonna take me a second to write because I actually need to write out molecules because there's no clear way to really abbreviate that. For my first conversion factor, I want to get rid of molecules of sulfuric acid. And I'm going to go to moles because moles is my bridge to everywhere. So one mole of sulfuric acid. And I'm going to wind up using this one where we have Avogadro's number in the denominator. So molecules of sulfuric acid cancel molecules of sulfuric acid. Now I want to get rid of moles of sulfuric acid and turn it into mass. So I'm going to have one mole of sulfuric acid in my denominator. And I'll put the 98.082 grams of sulfuric acid in the numerator. So moles of sulfuric acid cancel moles of sulfuric acid, leaving us with just grams of sulfuric acid. So when I did this, I got a value of 122 grams of sulfuric acid. The issue is that I only have two sig figs with my starting number. So we have two different options for our final answer. You can do 120 grams of sulfuric acid, because that would give you two sig figs, or you could do 1.2 times 10 to the second grams of sulfuric acid. Either way is suitable for your final answer. So on number 28, I'm going to start with the 4.50 grams of carbon dioxide. I want to get rid of the grams of carbon dioxide. So I'm going to use the molar mass 
that I calculated beforehand. So I got 44.009. So I'm going to put that value in the denominator. So grams is gone. Now we're asked to calculate molecules. So I'm going to use Avogadro's number to go from moles to molecules. So there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon dioxide in one mole of carbon dioxide. And so we can cancel moles of carbon dioxide with moles of carbon dioxide, and we're just left with molecules of carbon dioxide. When I crunched the numbers on that one, I got 6.16 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of carbon dioxide.